What's up, guys? Welcome back to the MLG 2v2 Pro Invitational. My name is Axel Toss. I am joined by Axlab, and we're in a week of... Um, what are we in a week of? Kind of a little bit of a transition from our MLG winter season into some WCS the spring stuff. Spring season, yeah. WCS yeah. And, and later on the mm -hmm. MLG spring season. So, uh, of course, if you haven't been watching our, our winter season stuff, last Friday we just finished up the winter exhibition and the grand finals ended up being CJ Hero versus Marine King. Yeah. Uh, all those VODs, of course, are on YouTube.com slash official MLGSC2. You can catch up on those. But this week, it's a little bit of a fun week. Today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, we're having a kind of a mini, mini pro invite 2v2 tournament. Four teams, single elimination, best of five, one best of five every day. Today is Grubby and Todd versus Minigun and Destiny. Grubby and Todd won game one with uh, a really cool teamwork where uh, Todd expanded yeah. fed Grubby resources. They're Grubby taking went, it seriously, man. They're they like, were. we got a strategy, we're going to go for it, and we're not going to give you all a chance. Making a bazillion air units, bringing the Air Force in. The Golden Armada. I think there's a screenshot on Reddit a couple days ago of uh, Grubby just went exclusively That's carriers a good and voiders description. and stuff. Of course, the Golden Armada is actually a StarCraft II lore term. I, I'm not very seasoned. Yeah. With it's it's the, the it's the like the Protoss super army. It's called the Golden uh, Armada. It's like their their yeah. most powerful force. Uh, who Salindus is in charge of the Golden Armada. Wow. And and you look at Grubby. I mean, he powered out a massive air force and is overwhelmed. Destiny minigun. Yeah. Of course, it wasn't Grubby on his own. He was being uh, resourced by Todd. Yes. Someone, it's like one of those... Um, there's like an actual custom game where someone controls the economy and someone controls the unit movement. And that's that's kind of how that was. But yes. pretty cool strategy there from Team Kings. They are in the bottom left of the Bone Yard. Is that what it's called? I think we... we this is, no, this is the Bone Trench. The Bone Trench. Last Excuse map me. was the yes, Bone Yard. Yes, I was a little bit confused. Okay, a lot so of bones in bone, too. Yeah, indeed. All right, it's going to be Todd and Grubby showing very powerful Protoss play. There's a... a I just said a lot of words that started with P. Uh, <laughs> in the top right, we have Guns and Brooches. Why aren't they doing their little slogan thing they do in, in the beginning? Yeah, you know, they, I think that last thing was, was a little bit disappointed in. Uh, you know, they, they did kind of, Grubby just took control of the map and, and basically took it over. And, and, you know, they could be a little bit mentally dismantled. So they're, okay, there we go. Got to remind him, <laughs> remind him to do the uh, slogan. Uh, <laughs> 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 I, I I must have done it wrong. I think I did it wrong. Should I, I try again. With, with no, no, no. Let, let, him, let him do it. It's, it's, it's their thing. Oh, well, what, one thing to point out. This map is called the Bone Trench. If yes. you look at the middle of the map, there's a trench that a probe just went through. Yes. And it's lined with bones. You can oh. see on each side of that, There's if you zoom in there, there's, there's some bones on... Yeah, there you go. Some bones of uh, some prehistoric animals, maybe yep. some uh, primeval zerg or something. Uh, so he... That trench is the idea is where a lot of battles might take place. And whoever is foolish enough to go down that trench could potentially be turned to bones by units attacking from all sides. Of course, there's high ground and watchtowers on either side of that trench. All right, so let's see what, what these guys are up to. It looks like... No wall in this game. Minigun has two gases. Stay in one base for a little bit. And Destiny going for that natural expansion. Meanwhile, we're not seeing any crazy fast expos from the Protoss side of things. So looking like it's not going to be a similar strategy to last game as far as one person gets the money and the other person uses the money. This map, of course, would be a little bit trickier to do that Nexus first build and cannon defense because uh, if you're trying to defend your natural, it's, it's a very wide opening, right? Yeah. Um, and there's even like a little back ramp they can sneak up in there as well. So uh, Grubby and Todd are going to play something a little bit different. We see Destiny with a fairly quick roach horn at the 412 mark already getting roaches. So... Uh, I think what could be happening is Destiny and Minigun are hoping that Grubby and Todd will take an expansion, and then they can try to line up a timing to kill that expansion. This is a pretty scary push here, oh, though. Oh, yeah. Um, in the grand scheme two of things, we've got and, uh, two Militia Corps on the way. Yes. Uh, but we do have a Stalker out here from Minigun, and he has that Militia Corps overhead, so that should be very instrumental in helping get rid of this aggression. One Zealot by Grubby going to try to focus down a, a few probes. How many can they get? One probe goes down. Only a single pro. Uh, a lot of damage on the Stalker. That Stalker... Oh, they put damage on a Stalker. Now with the Stalker oh. dead, there's nothing to oppose the Mothership Corps. we got two Stalkers here. One from Todd, one from Grubby as well, trying to take down these Lings. Take, take down some probes. Two Mothership Corps here from, again, Todd and Grubby in production oh, here from Destiny. I only see one Queen. we got some slow Lings on the field. That's not going to be enough. And a Stargate is on the way here before it looks like Grubby 
uh, back home. Or that I, might be. I think Minigun held that off pretty well, though. Minimal yeah. pro blosses. He killed one Mothership Core, forced to recall the second, and they got several gateway kills as well. Well so, played, Minigun. Yeah. It was, it was a great defense. Uh, the slow Zergians kept some of the Stalkers busy, and then uh, Minigun Stalkers then able to take out those Mothership Cores fairly convincingly. Uh, as we progress, though, you know, Todd looks like he's either going for Blink or, or Dark Shrine. Uh, Grubby again going for the Stargate play. Hmm. Send in that it's probe. It's interesting. Minigun hasn't revealed his tech path. You know, he, he did lose some probes that harass. He was set back a little bit. But he has a Stalker count. It's on a counterattack. Grubby and Todd oh. lost their first few Don't units. Get so trapped. Ooh, that Mothership Core of Grubby oh, is so Oh, Minigun! Low. Letting one Stalker go a little bit further than he wanted. Trying to pull that guy back. A Zealot coming forward. It's going to be a Zealot, three Stalkers, and a Militia Core versus a Zealot, three Stalkers, and a Militia Core. Except Grubby and Todd are going to have to work together here to fend off this, this light aggression here from Minigun. Minigun doing a great job so far taking out a Zealot, getting rid of, uh, or discouraging one of the Stalkers from trying to help out. And now Todd and Grubby are going to be staying on one base for a little bit longer. They are. Todd going up to four gate Dark Templar. Grubby powering up some Void Ray. So I think they're planning on a... a oh, one Void Ray overextends just a little oh. bit. Stalkers, uh, oh, oh going to take it out. Oh, he gets it. Wow. I don't think he lost a Stalker either. No, one of them got very hurt, but that's still a very big win. Void Rays are expensive, expensive units. So going forward, I think Grubby and Todd, they're looking to, one, try to get some damage done with Dark Templar. And then their follow-up is going to be a massive gateway assault. We see Todd is, is going up to, I think, uh, four or Grubby's five gates, like, cancel five the gates, gateway. Actually. Cancel the gateway. Cancel the gateway. Todd, cancel the gateway. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Now Grubby can get out of there. Oh, but does he want to go out? There's five, six stalkers here from Minigun. Nice time warp there. Actually, it's going to whiff. Uh, it was almost a brilliant time warp. Nice defensive time warp there from Minigun trying to enable his units to be able to retreat. Mother Corps might be forfeit, though. Might have been better to recall even as he's trying to get out of there. The stalker uh, getting killed by that prismatic alignment from the Void Ray, and good amount of Stalkers here from Team Kings. The Mothership Core does end up falling, but here's some Lings and Roaches from Destiny. One important thing is remember, Destiny uh, took that hatchery first, and he's been relatively untouched throughout this game. So going forward, he has a, a very strong economy. Uh, they have a Spore Crawler set up as well as Observers, yes. so the Dark Templar won't do too much. Uh, and with Destiny's massive economy, he can definitely get a very strong army. The question is, uh, are they going to identify the expansions that Grubby and Todd are throwing down? And if they do identify yeah. them, can they go and kill them without having to worry about a DT counterattack? Yeah, I think Destiny, it's, it's, it's starting to become clear why they chose this map. You know, the long rush distance is a little bit better for the Zerg player versus the Protoss. So he can get those reactionary units out and can really focus on making sure he's making those drones at the right time. Now, the DT was made there from, uh, from Todd, but it's not doing much just yet. Just chilling on side of his opponent's, uh, you know, cluster of four or five bases uh, not wanting to go in there just yet. I, I think that's pretty smart, of course. I think they realize their opponents are going to be ready for it at this point. We can see even Destiny is looking for a Dark Templar with a Roach Overseer oh. squadron. He sees it. Oh, and he see it? the DT Oh, he did. Yeah, right. He's going to let him go. Yes. All right. Minigun, of course, is pressure in their front. You know what I really like? I like the way Grubby and Todd ex expanded. They knew they were behind from the opening with Destiny having such a fast expansion and neither of them having those expansions. And so they're like... If they try to pressure the front or if they scout for expansion, we'll build the hidden expansions. Yes, it's a risk, but it's likely they won't be scouted. And if they go unscouted for another minute or two, we'll be right back in the game, pretty much caught up macro-wise. Grubby trying to see what he can do with this Oracle, unable to accomplish much as uh, Minigun was able to spot it. Taking down a drone, though, and that drone was wanting to take an expansion at the gold base. And Grubby going to sneak out of there with that Oracle. Very nice play there. We can see they're taking down the rocks on their side. Oh. Bringing them back away. They're worried about the potential advance that Destiny and uh, Minigun are doing. We can see a sizable Roach speeding force. And those Roaches are about to have Roach speed and 1-1 one, one upgrades. Minigun, of course, has a Colossus with the army as well. And while the Protoss army doesn't look that strong on its own, if you put the Roaches in front of that Colossus, all of a sudden it's much much scarier. All right, does uh, Team Kings have a response to this? Time Warp going down, trying to slow this down as much as possible. Not the best coordination there. The Stalker's overextending the links, not wanting to go in there just yet. Another Time Warp there. Yet another Time Warp here from Team Kings. The Protoss coming forward. Uh, all those Zealots and Archons, and now Team Guns and Broaches is going to be on the run, losing a lot of links and Broaches there for free, and going to scurry away as fast as possible. Two Colossi overhead, but there's also two Void Rays here, so you have to be very careful. 
he does. I think they really need to wait for a little bit more roaches, zealots, and or hydras into composition to, to round yeah, out the, the colossi there. I mean, they, they tried to push it a few roaches, but there was way too many zealots in the front there. They tried to retreat, but those beautiful time warps gave the, the, the Team Kings basically a lot of free kills. Yep. Grubby and Todd, for those of you who don't know, used to be on four kings. And I asked Todd, Todd, you're going up against guns and brooches. They have a pretty cool name. Would you like to be called anything in particular? He's like, all right, go ahead and call us Team Kings. So that's what's happening here. Again, Team Europe. Todd and Grubby. Ling's coming forward to try to counterattack at this third base. And going to get sliced up. A couple probe kills, though. Not too bad at all. So the question here is, how will the players progress in tech? It looks like neither team really wants to advance yet. Minigun, we can see powering out the Colossi-based army, which I think is a, is a great addition to the Zerg. Destiny is going to stick with Roaches and Hydras for now. And if they stick with that composition, what they want to do is they want to hit a really strong timing before their opponents get too much area of effect. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to look to attack uh, basically bef before there's too many Colossi and or Void Rays well, and that, or that, Size Storm. That's like that window is, is closing very fast because Storm is on the way here for Todd. And Grubby's building Colossi. And, and Grubby's building Colossi. Do you think he already has, let's see, he doesn't have any on the field. His first Colossus just popped out. He hasn't started those, the Thermal Lance just yet. There we go, just now starting Thermal Lance. So if we're talking about a window where Minigun and Destiny can, can you know, can really take advantage of this unit composition they have. I, I feel like once Grubby gets three or four Colossi out, once Todd gets Storm done, that window might be closed and they have to start transitioning into other stuff. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye on that. But, uh, you know, Grubby and Todd know this using re uh, Revelation there from the uh, the Oracle, and they're able to see the, the unit composition of their opponent and uh, where they are at any given time. Definitely ready to receive it, Tommy, but Destiny is actually adding in that infestation pit. So perhaps they're not going to go for that mass road charge. We're talking a little bit of a zealot harass here done by Minigun. Uh, Grubby has a cannon, though, in a fast pro pool. He should be okay. That cannon might get taken out, though. Um, it might be. Um, in fact, it, it probably it will be. be All right, here comes the reinforcements. He's going to take care of those zealots. But uh, I wonder if he's going to try to add on Vipers. I think that could be yeah, a very I, solid option. It, it would be. I, I, I feel like he built that infestation pit purely to tech to hive. He needs that hive. Um, but then he's, he's not actually going there. And, and the reason why Vipers would be so there good, normally you want to get either Swarm most infestors and, and then add in Vipers a little bit later. But in 2v2, the Colossi are so important. If he can pull in uh, Grubby's Colossi, then Minigun's Colossi will be unopposed and will just ravage the Grubby Tog composition. Also, the other threats, like the Void Rays. Void Rays can focus down Colossi, and it's hard to get the Hydra to do damage. Oh, nice little attack here by Minigun. He might he just recall with him. Yeah, he can just recall right after killing the Nexus if he wants. Oh, that's exactly great what move. A couple of units get oh, niched. Oh, no. Uh, but definitely worth it. Uh, a few basic gaming units for the Nexus kill. Meanwhile, Destiny is sniping another Nexus over here in the bottom, and these roaches are going to oh, die. Oh, wow. Um, but if he, gets, if, if he kills he, it, he I will think get it's... the Nexus. That one, though, it's a lot of roaches. I, I think it's... I want to say it's worth it. Oh, a nice burrow move there. That's no great. observer quite yet. There's a cannon just inside of range. Todd's going to have to rebuild another oh, cannon. Grubby looking for revenge. Sending Trying to take a Nexus snipe across the map. Hive is not yet done, so no Vipers are in place, so no ability oh, to Grubby's abduct this point. Grubby's got a recall. Also, there's Void Rays. Oh, Minigun feeling very confident. Taking down one of the Void Rays, but there's the recall oh. from Grubby. Another little cancel on the Nexus there. Those Roaches using Burrow made it a great option. Todd looking to attack, but then realizing he's on creep and spotted, he's going to retreat back. Minigun and Destiny pulling some great moves out I'm here. I'm loving it, man. Um, you know, denying their opponent's expansions, giving themselves time to proceed in their tech, and we're seeing the Hive is done. We should start seeing those Vipers in production fairly soon here from Destiny. Those are going to be very important in case there's any uh, straight-on engagement. Uh, of course, again, pulling your opponent's Colossi, potentially High Templar, uh, Void Race, uh, of course. Uh, it's going to help you so much in those big, big battles so you can really deal with that area of effect because you don't want a bunch of storms or, or no, no. thermal lances melting away your army. One thing to note, though, is while they did get those two Nexus snipes, Grubby and Todd were base up on them for quite a while. Of course, Grubby and Todd are at six bases, where Minigun and Destiny are just now expanding to six bases. So those couple of Nexus snipes, while they were great, uh, I wouldn't say Destiny Minigun are ahead. I think a more kind of equalize the situation. It's really going to come down to the major engagements. How effective can the Vipers be? Uh, and, and what can the, the the King team basically do to neutralize those? We can see Grubby now adding in three, uh, going up to three Stargates, excuse me, adding two more Stargates oh. and a Fleet Beacon. Tempest would be a great way to try to counter those Vipers. Of course, feedback counters them as well. 
But sometimes uh, it's a little bit tricky if you have a big army to always have to temp on the right position. Uh, Tempest can really snap down those Vipers for, uh, at a great range very effectively. We've got a lot of high Templars on the field here for Todd as well. And uh, if you can get those feedbacks onto the Vipers, oh, yeah. again, that can be uh, instrumental in dictating you know, how a battle ends up proceeding. You can see plenty of extra evolution chambers by Destiny being built purely to, to be able to allow the Vipers to conceal them to get more energy. As those get their energy, they may be looking to do a timing. If they hit before those Tempests come out, I think the battle will favor them. You can see Minigun, they're already moving out, is so killing the rocks. Is so many Colossi. Now, only Grubby's army is over here, so this would be a great battle uh, for Team Guns and Brooches to take. You might even end up recalling away. No, the time warp going down. This Nexus is definitely going to be forfeit. The probes running for their lives. Meanwhile, Todd is going to back up and try to help deal with this composition. Oh. Where are all those High Templar? The Templar are... Uh, oh, okay, they're there. Yeah. On the left. They're, yep. they're, they're hanging out. I see them. The tricky thing here is, of course, while Minigun can recall out, go for it. if they get stuck, Destiny could not recall out. They might so go they, for they it. have to commit to the battle. The Hydra's going forward. Uh, Todd is going to be the first one to extend forward, trying to get the feedbacks down onto the Vipers. The Vipers are looking for those Void Rays and Colossi. Colossi from Minigun here doing a lot of damage. From them, going to try to kite backwards, trying to pick their battle perfectly. They want the better combat. Storms going to be melting away. So many Zerg units here. The Templar from Todd truly showing their power. Time Wars going down from both of these players, but now Minigun has the better concave. The Vipers taking those Void Rays into their hands, and the Hydras getting that damage done, but now the Tempests are here. That's the Viper abduct onto the Tempest. The Hydras making quick work of those, and Team Guns and Broach is going to be pushing forward here. A great battle by Team Minigun and Destiny. Destiny was able to keep enough of the Hydras alive to counteract the airplay. Grubby still has a decent number of Colossi, though, and the meat of the Destiny Minigun team is getting a lot oh, smaller. But oh, a massive rally. Roaches come in here. That may be exactly what they need to continue the fight. Still backing up. They've got to be careful. They're not feeling confident right now. They're backing up. Um, the I don't blame them. Uh, Grubby has a, has a very scary army, and if you fight inside your opponent's base, right in that location, the gateways would have taken a lot of damage, while Grubby's Colossi are purely attacking opposing units. Instead, they're going to back up, try to take down additional bases. The Tempest getting some shots off onto these units. One Roach forfeiting his life to turn around. Brain now, Roach. are they going to decide to turn around and engage? No, they're, they're going to just back away. Oh, More Vipers on the way. Oh, straight Colossus. Every unit's going to be important in games like these. That was a very interesting battle. Of course, Minigun and Destiny uh, took out the one base of Grubby. But as far as units traded, I feel both teams lost roughly equivalent uh, units in that engagement. Yeah, it seems similar across the board. It in does. Fact, it uh, does. I mean, a lot of a lot of uh, the Minigun lost pretty much everything but those Colossi in that battle. And Destiny lost most of his army as well. So uh, Grubby and Minigun both preserved some of their armies, whereas Destiny and Todd lost most of theirs. One important thing to note, though, is that Grubby is now building a lot of Tempest. And these could play a role in the later battles as their superior range will really help control the engagement. Yeah, and not only that, but control additional expansions. We're seeing here Minigun are trying to take this expo, but a DT and a lot of Tempest saying, no way, that's not happening. And again, Tempest can shoot across this, and how do you really defend against that? It's, it's hard to say. However, Team Guns and Broaches come to the south side of the map, realizing the Tempests are on the north side. Can try to get some damage done. Zealots and Stalkers getting donated here. Two team guns and brooches. This Nexus is definitely going to fall. And Grubby and uh, and Todd here trying to figure out, all right, what do we do from here? What kind of unit composition do we go for? In fact, Todd, he's kind of starving. He only has a yeah. few high Templar, but... Todd's food is insanely low. He's only yeah. 65 food. He's been losing so many bases here. Uh, and Grubby has probably the strongest army in the game right now. But combined, Destiny Minigun can probably take him on. Todd does have a few high Templar, and maybe with, with, with really great feedbacks, if he can neutralize the Vipers, then the Tempest can be very effective. We can see here, or just sniping off one of those high Templar, gonna pick off some creep tumors. This could be a point where maybe, once Grubby Max is out, he may want to feed Todd, but instead what he's doing is he's oh. actually a very expensive army. Oh, Minigun Destiny saying now's the time to fight. Look out for the Vipers. The abducts going down onto the Tempest saying you cannot leave. The Mothership Corps trying to throw down the time warps. More abducts here from Destiny, but the Tempest turning around, melting away a lot of the army. The Colossi, you don't want those to be in front. And Destiny's going to back away for now with those Vipers, perhaps waiting for his opponents to come forward so he can use those abducts. And Team Guns and Broach is going to be backing away, not feeling confident, engaging just a singular army here from Grubby. Again, there's no Todd units here. Actually, so there's some high tempo in the back, which can be very scary, but very nice control being displayed by, uh, by Grubby and Todd. It is very great control on both sides. We can see uh, Grubby was actually trying to expand on the left side a little bit of a ninja expansion. Uh, that was right. not going to stay, though. Actually, uh, a nice little squad of Zelts here, and Todd's sitting in a Dark Templar. 
Oh, but they have they have uh, plenty of defense here with Observer and Cannon. And Grubby is adding in carriers. That, that's going to help a lot for the AI, but so far, the, the Tempests have really had a problem with the Abducts. They've done great damage, but they've also yeah. been being picked off. And carriers could potentially suffer the same fate. Uh, while Todd does have those high Templar, the, the problem is, is that Todd and Grubby don't really have enough meeting units to tank in the front. So the Templar can't really be in the front to hit the feedbacks because they will die to the Colossi, to the Roaches, to the Hydras. Uh, and if they're not in the front, then the Vipers can pull off those abducts. So uh, it's going to be very tricky. We can see Grubby and Todd so far have been fighting a retreating battle. Uh -oh. But they constantly retreat and use storms. Oh, uh, aggressive blink <laughs> by Grubby. Bold, bold stalkers there, blinking straight into the main army there of Destiny and Minigun. But the Tempest trying to get their damage down for the back. High Templars positioning themselves for it, trying to get those money storms. There is a Mothership Corps threateningly uh, glaring at this army. Again, it has the ability to use a couple time warps if he so pleases. And Minigun and Destiny gonna stay back for now, not feeling comfortable to engage that. But as time goes on, Grubby's gonna be able to add more and more carriers, which, I mean, we have yet to see how effective they can be. But um, again, they're one of the most powerful units in StarCraft 2 and have the ability to be very cost efficient. But again, if Destiny can get those abducts with the Vipers, it's got those Hydras underneath, and th those are the real damage dealers. You just gotta get them in range. They are, it's a very scary combination there. We see Destiny now is actually sending the Roaches across the map trying to do a little bit of a counterattack, and this yeah. could be very effective. That might force Grubby into action. Yeah, this, this Nexus is definitely going to fall, and now we're going to see uh, the big engagement might happen here. Grubby coming forward, wishing the High Templars were here from Todd, but they're a little bit exposed. Minigun trying to take advantage of that, but he's going to have to back away. Grubby and Todd now getting their main armies together, and Destiny's kind of falling back a little bit with units of his own. Minigun a little bit of a misclick there, sending his army uh, forward and two Colossi were killed because of that, but more and more carriers being added on here for Grubby, going up to plus three on the air weapons upgrades. Meanwhile, the Roach is trying to get that counterattack damage done, taking down the Nexus in the middle left-hand side, but some DPs being warped in, which should be enough to uh, prevent these Roach from doing too much damage. They are, of course, oh, Destiny, no. I think. Tempest! Oh, they're so vulnerable! Storms! Ah, uh, Templars from above, laying down the storms, a couple Actually, Vipers getting pulled. Tempest. Actually, not even losing a single Tempest. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. Back here, taking him out, and he's gonna get another one. High Templars extending pretty far forward. I wonder how good a, a couple Broodlords or Swarm Hosts would be in a situation like this. Well, we can see Destiny does have three Broodlords. Uh, of oh, course, yeah. the, the greatest threat oh, is the air threat. Yes. Um, the ground, if you look at Minigun's army, Minigun has enough Colossi. I think if he engages first and just powers through the air damage by Grubby, right? And then Destiny comes in behind him. That but can the, be a the very storms are, are, this, are, this, are gonna be pretty scary if- They are. So, the Storms are extremely potent against Destiny's army, Storms and Feedback, right. which is why when they engage, I think Minigun has to be the one to be willing okay. to sacrifice the life of his Archons and Colossi, because Storms can hurt those units, right? But they're not going to instantly kill them like they would the Zerg army. So the Protoss army can go in first and push the Templar back. Then the Zerg can come in behind the Protoss and try to pick off the expensive units with Abdux and with Hydranus. Another counterattack here from Minigun, sending a lot of Zelsa at third base. Only a gas is mining here. It's the last mineral was quite literally just mined out. The Nexus will end up falling, but the Zealots will eventually get cleaned up. It's unclear if that was really worth it. A lot of Zealots went down, but Minigun has a very large bank. Yeah, he's also secured this base at the middle left. Uh, top middle left, I should say. There's, oh, there's two one bases Templar was looking for some feedbacks using the Observer of Grubby to help spot. There oh. it goes. One Viper gets a little bit bold, tries to do it alone, and uh, one thing you cannot do in StarCraft is, uh, is take on an army by yourself. Yeah. YOLO's place in StarCraft 2 is beneficial sometimes, but yes. most times you gotta Grubby's air be army is getting insanely scary. He's got three attack upgrades. He, he's working on the shield upgrades. Uh, or actually, sorry, that's, that, that's Minigun. He's actually not getting any upgrades currently. He's, he's actually, Grubby's, you know, he doesn't have that much resources. He's just recently started mining from that right side base. It looks like Grubby gonna try to shut down this base of Destiny. One Viper getting caught up guarding. He's taking Look out. Look at the Templar positioning. That's such a great positioning over there, right to the left of the oh, Air Force. Oh, yep. Uh, waiting for any over-eager Vipers that would try to abduct the air units, and the Templars would snag those with feedback. So a nice little teamwork combination there sniping down one hatchery. So I feel like as time goes along, um, it might be more up to Team Destiny and um, and Minigun to try to make an engagement happen, considering they've, they've shut down these two bases in the middle left, and um, some counterattacks are actually happening at the top left. At the same time, somehow some zealots from Minigun getting into the main base of Grubby. 
not being too effective over there. Uh, <laughs> I think your point's really good. There, there was a time when Minigun Destiny right. had about 150 food advantage. And I think if they pressed that advantage, they, they might have won the game right there. But as it stands now, uh, Todd has been able to get right back up into having a very, very strong army before he just had a few Templar. But now he has a ton of Zealots. And while Zealots aren't uh, the most amazing units in these late game engagements, they will help a lot at keeping a Templar alive from the attacks of the Archons, the Colossi, and the Hydra. There's another little harass here. Uh, Templar ready to hit some feedback. Right? Watch oh. out for the storms. Kind of softening up those Hydras. Yeah. They're going to waddle away, though. They'll stay alive for now. Got to be careful with those Vipers. It's a very dangerous game here. Uh, How do you engage your opponent? I'm trying to... You have to have somebody else go first to push a Templar backwards. Like, normally, if you're Zerg facing a late game Protoss army, what you do is you use a Swarm Host to push a Templar back. And then once the Templar are pushed back, then you can send in the Vipers with, with something else and pick off their units with abducts. But you have to push the ground units back first. And Destiny doesn't have the army to do that alone. He's just Hydra as Viper. Uh, so uh, Minigun has to push the Templar. Oh, nice little duck there getting one of those Tempests. This is a hatchery though, yeah. Adding on some spores, oh. trying to keep that location safe. Look what Minigun's doing. Triple Stargate by Minigun. Uh, if he gets his own Tempest, Tempest kill their Tempest very fast. It only takes a few shots because, of course, to a massive area, does Tempest do extra bonus damage. Gotta be careful going through that little choke point. There's this High Templar ready and waiting at some damage done. A lot of changelings being made here from Destiny, perhaps trying to distract his opponent. Another storm going down. Oh, the change is actually getting into the army, and it's hard to see them underneath uh, all the carriers. That was a great storm. Oh, Another yeah. good storm there from Todd. Man, Todd is just really doing work with these Templar. He's got to. Um, oh, another one gets another Hydra. Oh, another two Hydras go down. Uh, all those kills add up. You know, uh, Hydras aren't, like, they're not as valuable as, let's say, a Tempest or a, Col or a Colossus, but they add up. You kill three Hydras, that's, that's, you know, that's a lot of money. Uh, and, and as your opponents have to keep replacing it, we're now at the stage of the game where the bases are mined out. Destiny yeah. has one, he's, Destiny's only long distance mining, right? Uh, Minigun's basically on one base on the far left side, uh, whereas Todd and Grubby, because they took their bases later, e each of them still has two bases going. So they have twice the income right now of Team Gab. Uh, and, and that's not a situation Gab wants to be in, especially considering that they're not trading efficiently. The Tempest, yeah. the Tempest is keep picking units off. The Templar keep picking units off. Uh, they can't just sit back and eat it forever. Eventually, they'll be bled dry. You know, we're approaching the point where every unit is starting to become very, 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 very important because of a lack of resources that are going to be happening on the map. Uh, you can't replenish as fast. You, you essentially don't want to be trading because you're not going to be able to remake any units. So should be very interesting to see what kind of units these guys are going to be adding on to their compositions and, you know, w what they're going to decide to use the last of their resources on. And, of course, these guys are going to be so, so careful with their unit positioning. And I love this, like a cannon line going down here from Todd. Um, that could be a nice anchor point to, to stick behind. It definitely can. You know, it, what they need is some buffer to keep the army back while the Tempest can do the damage they want to do. Oh, a little bit of a lag spike there. Hopefully that doesn't uh, stick with it. We can see Minigun adding in his own Tempest. So if he can get enough of those, and if he can catch Grubby off guard, he might be able to pick off some of Grubby's Tempest. Tempest versus Tempest often comes down to an Observer War. So he can keep the... Uh, oh! Oh, nice little snag there. <laughs> oh, Templar right, tries Templar to get some feedbacks. <laughs> oh, but he gets <laughs> an Observer from the Storm. As a feedback from, uh, from Minigun on yeah. his side Templar. Interesting little duel here. Uh, the Observer and Detection War is so important when you're talking about trying to utilize the, hi the high range of the Tempest. Uh, but what really helps for that actually is changelings. Changelings are extremely useful because they're free. If you push forward and Observer and Overseer gets picked off, you have to replace it. Yep. Changelings, yes, your opponent might kill them, but if they kill them, it'll give you vision of them for at least a second. That second is all it takes for Tempest to get off one volley, and you're just using Overseer energy. So uh, that's where the the Destiny and Minigun are probably going to try to look to take it. Oh! Not able to get anything in with that Templar. Todd was hoping to catch a couple energy units off guard, get several feedbacks, and trade one, one Templar for several units here. Uh, some more little Zerging harasses going on on the left side. Got uh, some Stalkers going over there as well. So Minigun, I think what he's going to try to do is trade these Stalkers off, because he wants to get more Tempest in his army. Yeah, because he has a 4K, oh, revelation. 15K, or 1.5K in the bank. Corruptors getting over eager. I think the Corruptors are trying to spot for, for Minigun's Tempest, but with the revelation on much of Destiny's army, that's going to make Grubby's Tempest so much more effective. 
Star One Archon is going to get taken out. Tempests are fairly good against those Archons. Looks like uh, Viper is trying to get in a position. Another Archon being taken down. I think the, the Stalkers eventually were taken out there on the left-hand side of the map. Unless they're brought back. No, I don't see him on the field. So. Todd has a little squad of Zelts. They're doing some, uh, some decent work in defending that base. So the real story, though, is going to be the Tempest. So now Minigun has been able to add three more Tempests. He's trying to catch up on upgrades. Although, in Tempest vs. Tempest, upgrades aren't actually that big a deal. Oh, more units from... Oh, the road, the Hydra is overextending! Ouch. Lots of... Uh, actually, I think only one Hydra died, oh, but... Broodord's being taken down as well by the Tempest. A lot of very low on health. Oh, no! The Broodord's actually being caught in the back here. Observer sees this, and they're going to get taken out. Destiny, uh, with a little bit of miscontrol, and they're going to just... Are they just going to try to counter... Are we going to see a base trade? Is that what we're seeing? It here? might be, but this is a, a base trade I think that Grubby and Todd are, are, are loving because over here on the right side, they still have two mining bases, whereas uh, Minigun only has a single one on the left side. So it's going to be two bases to one. Destiny's last mining base is going down here. Uh, it's going to come down to a major engagement, and the question is who's going to come out on top? All right, it looks like Todd is like, come on, Grubby, let's back up. Let's deal with this. He's kind of posturing his army to the left-hand side uh, of the middle of this map. Grubby is just going to continue surging forward on the right-hand side. So these armies are going to get split up, and perhaps that's what Minigun and Destiny are waiting for. If, if this army isn't together, obviously two versus one is going to be, uh, you know, Destiny and Minigun are going to love that. But just like that, Grubby pulling back his army to potentially deal with this, and we might see that engagement we were looking for. It's very important during this engagement to not be inside your opponent's base. Not only will, uh, will the, your opponent have vision of your exact positional layout, but they, they will also have the fact that their buildings will be taking some of the damage inside their units. So we can see here, that's why Minigun and Destiny are backing away. They do not want to be caught inside Todd's base, because killing the buildings at this point isn't that viable. It's really going to come down to this engagement. Changelings were killed there, of course. As I mentioned, changelings are very important to keep track of your opponent's forces. Grubby has been doing the same thing using the Oracle. It's hard to see those changelings. You have to click on them to actually kill them. Oh, it's revelation on the do. Tempest. That's a big move there, as, as now uh, Grubby and Todd's Tempest can get off those attacks at a very long range. All right, Minigun and Destiny are going to be on the run here. There's a blink forward from Grubby. The Hydra turn around, taking some shots off. High Templar trying to extend forward, get those storms down. Grubby and Destiny continue to back up. They're considering turning around and going for it. The Vipers have to be perfectly placed. Don't want to get fed back by those High Templar. You want to pull those Tempests forward. Archons as well get that damage done, but Destiny and Minigun running out of real estate to really retreat. They are. The Hydras have to find an angle where they won't be not by the storm. Shield. The Hydras, there's still Protoss in front of the Destiny's army. Oh, there's a storm onto the Hydras, and it looks like a uh, huge engagement on the left-hand side. Protoss versus Protoss. Destiny, they come in from the right-hand side. Vipers taking care of the carriers, trying to pull them into the Hydras, but the Colossi are frying away the Hydras, and that's definitely going to go in favor of the Protoss player, but it looks like Minigun won the engagement on the left-hand side. It's a very close battle to call. Still a lot of Tempest alive, and I think the air might be enough here for Grubby, he's got those Tempests, he's got those Carriers, and Minigun doesn't really have a response to those. And there's the GG from Minigun and Destiny. Grubby and Todd taking it, showing the power of Carriers and Tempests and properly positioned armies. What went wrong there? Well, you know, the big story there is Destiny's army was designed specifically to counter pure Protoss air. And, and when, when Destiny and Minigun retreated, they split in different paths, and that allowed the, the Team Kings, yeah. uh, Grubby and Todd, to isolate the Hydralis on one... Di Hydras and, and Vipers were all isolated on the right side. And then when he tried to come in, there was no Stalkers, there was no Colossi, there was no Archons. There was nothing to push back the Templar and the Colossi. And all the Hydralis and Vipers got totally annihilated. They really needed to be with the other Protoss yeah. army. They had to really team together. Uh, their strength and unity, man. Wow. Divided, they fell. Divided, they fell indeed. Patience, very important in StarCraft 2. What an epic 2v2 there uh, in game number two. And again, guys, this is a best of five. So we got another game coming your way, of course. At least one more. At least one more. Todd and Grubby are currently up 2-0. to zero. They are one win away from advancing to the Wednesday final. Guys, stay tuned. Game three coming up.